The sacred valley was shaped by the Incas for agriculture. Terraces were built into the mountainsides so that crops could be grown at all altitudes. But in modern times, this ancient farming system has faced huge challenges, from man-made fires to overgrazing and a lack of water. The Peruvian Andes could be facing its worst drought in 50 years. Hundreds of animals have died and crops have failed. The climate is changing. But there are some local communities who believe that by reforesting with native tree species and restoring natural ecosystems, they can lock the water in and prevent it from disappearing again. Native tree species like these polylepis have all but disappeared from the highlands. But native cultural communities are realizing, like their ancestors, just how valuable they are. The women in the community are in charge of the saplings for the tree planting. Now they protect them, the leader of the community of Patacancha told CGTN in Quechua. Before, we had these polylepis trees in the high areas, but we were cutting them down to use them as firewood for cooking. But for the last 19 years, we've been taking care of them and we're planting them because they give us water and provide pasture for our animals. We have water here thanks to them, but other areas are in the middle of a drought. The replanting program began three decades ago, thanks to biologist Constantino Alka. He's from these highlands, and the work he started here has spread across the Andes. For the water for us is life, the economical solution for agriculture, and is the future of our kids. This message, this message I heard in Argentina, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, wherever I am visiting all these highland mountains, is the same thing. It's not because the climate change is going to tackle just only one country. No, it's going to tackle all the continent. And who knows, the entire world. Alka believes that the native communities in the Andes are part of the solution. With them, he has planted more than three million trees in Peru and protected or restored some 30,000 hectares of land. If they are going to have, like, a, they want to plant uh, 100,000 trees in a single day, they invite the neighbors to help them, and they are going to do it in a single day. After they are going to protect them, they have some rights inside of the community to perfect manage what they are doing. It's the reason why it's very important the local communities has to be involved on the program. The other thing, they must to be part of the solution. Yeah. For his efforts, Alka has been named a champion of the earth for inspiration and action, the United Nations' highest environmental accolade. Growing at up to 5,000 meters above sea level, higher than any forest in the world, these trees play a vital role in the fight against climate change and biodiversity loss. These polylepis trees grip and hold the earth with their roots, so when it rains heavily, they don't fall. They stop landslides too. That's why our native plants are important. The trees also harbor endangered wildlife, store carbon, fix soils, and help to capture water from the Andes melting glaciers, which is then slowly released for farming. Glaciers like this one, which used to be completely white, but are now melting due to climate change. Many times they pointed me the mountain and said, hey boss, that mountain 30 years ago were covered in snow, but now nothing more. Probably we are doing something bad and the Mother Earth is angry about that. Alka relies on his own Andean roots to build relationships with the indigenous communities. It's their custom of communal work which is key to restoration. A reminder that indigenous communities are at the forefront of the fight against climate change and biodiversity loss. Dan Collins, CGTN, in the Sacred Valley, Cusco.